Building Green is sponsored by the law firm of Goldstein Buckley, Seckman Rice and Pertz. Online at justicestartsnow.com. Your personal injury attorneys since 1962. Clive Daniel Home, the destination for everything for the home. Locally owned by proud supporters of WGCU for over 25 years. On the web at clivedanielhome.com. Conservancy of Southwest Florida, protecting Southwest Florida's environment for over 50 years and our area's first LEED Platinum certification. Online at conservancy.org. Find Mark National Bank and Trust, providing banking, trust, and investment services at offices in Fort Myers, Bonita Springs, and Naples. Online at findmarkbank.com. John R. Wood Properties, marketing thousands of homes each year since 1958. Online at johnrwood.com. And by Preferred Travel of Naples. Information on luxury cruises, vacations, and journeys of a lifetime is available at preferrednaples.com. Creating timeless travel memories. Support for WGCU's local productions comes from the estate of Patrick and Rosalie LaSala and from generous contributions by viewers like you. Thank you. Building green is um, designing in a way that improves the quality of our lives. Well, building green, I think, is really just doing the right thing. The concept of building green is not a new one. In fact, it's been around for more than 20 years. As of 2016, nearly 75,000 commercial projects were certified green across the globe, with 1.85 million square feet of building space receiving new certification every day. As a sustainability consultant, Dr. Jennifer Languel has helped clients from across the country identify their sustainability goals. She is considered a leader in green building in the state of Florida. When I look at green building, I look at it as a process of making an informed decision. So before, we didn't know how to build things more efficiently. We didn't necessarily have the technology or the advanced equipment to give us the performance we can now. We've been educated as to how to do things better, and we know we can do things better for our environment. One of the benefits of reducing your environmental impact with a green building is long-term sustainability. Languel says a lot of people get those terms confused. Sustainability and green tend to be used interchangeably, but they have distinctly different meanings. Green is looking at the environment and are we saving energy, are we saving water, are we using resources efficiently? So it tends to be just the environmental bubble, so to speak, with respect to green. When we talk about sustainability, we talk about a much broader picture and it's a balance of the environment, economics, and the community or social components. So ultimately, we won't have sustainability until we balance economics with society, with environment. But right now, economics is driving the train. There is a sense of reassurance that it's going to be a quality structure when we hear that a structure is going to be certified green. The challenge with that is green doesn't always equal energy efficiency. Green doesn't equal water efficiency. Green doesn't equal any one thing. So how you achieve that certification can vary from project to project. So without understanding the goals of the owner or the goals of the building, you can't be sure what it is exactly that they're doing to achieve green. So if it's corporate culture and it is in their inherent values, usually they're looking for a return on investment. They do understand the value of building green and preserving our environment, but they also understand the importance of having a return on their investment and as much as we'd like to think that everyone is making a, a right decision because of the environment and or society, the bottom line is I have to understand cost benefit. I have to understand return on investment because if I don't, I'll be out of business. And if my clients don't, they'll be out of business. So no one will be building green and that's not beneficial for anyone. When you hear someone has committed to build a green building, to me it is almost a bit of a sigh of relief to know that there's going to be a third party watching what the architect and contractors do, and they're looking out for the future of this building and the performance of this building. We want a high performance building, and we don't always get that with just an architect and just a contractor. We see a lot of investors saying, we want our portfolio of investments to be 
assets. And we also see finance partners requiring that their projects have a green component to them. Do they know exactly what that means? Usually not necessarily. They pick a certification program and that's the value of the certification programs is that the corporate culture, they're not subject matter experts in green building, but the programs that the U.S. Green Building Council, that Florida Green Building Coalition have come and created help these companies achieve their mission. One of the green building certification programs that is widely known around the world is LEED. LEED stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, and it is a certification program for commercial buildings. That program has expanded to encompass other types of buildings, and that program was created by the U.S. Green Building Council. The U.S. Green Building Council first formed in 1993. They released a pilot version of LEED in 1998, which actually didn't work very well. They revised it and released the first version in 2000. The LEED certification program is a tiered program, meaning you can be certified, you can be silver, gold, platinum. And what that means is you have achieved additional criteria or qualified for additional criteria that this program requires. They look at the site and they look at accessibility and connectivity and are you building in an appropriate location? They look at energy, are you being efficient with your use of energy? water efficiency, both indoors and outdoors. They look at the health of the interiors, the selection of materials that you've chosen, and also look at bigger picture, holistic sustainability issues. So each building would look at the credits and identify credits that they want to pursue based off of the individual project goals. Those credits always vary from project to project. So with respect to achieving certification, each of those categories has specific credits. You accumulate enough points and you can achieve certification. The more points you accumulate, the higher the certification level you achieve. We do third party certification because the industry in general, the architects, the contractors, the government officials are not green subject matter experts. And it's easier to defer to a third party that is a subject matter expert and to use their certification program to have that checks and balance in place and to have someone verify again that we are doing what we said we're going to do with respect to being more resource efficient. A leader in the rental car market is also leading the way in environmental design and efficiency in Southwest Florida. Hertz is putting the finishing touches on a new world headquarters and is hoping for gold. You know, building green to Hertz is really a component of a larger commitment we have to sustainability and corporate social responsibility. Uh, we believe that we need to be responsible stewards for the environment in which we are operating. I think it's important as a company, and it's really important to our employees and to our customers that we recognize the environmental impact that we have and to try to mitigate that and by doing things like green building. We have a history of being green. Our our old facility in Park Ridge, New Jersey, which was not built to be green, we actually uh, reconverted and it was and is LEED certified gold. When we originally designed this building, it was designed to be green. And that is a whole lot easier than trying to retrofit it like we did in our Park Ridge facility. Here, we built into the design and the process the fact that we wanted this to be as environmentally friendly as possible. You build it into the plan, and actually it becomes fairly easy. It's a little bit more money up front, but over the long term, what you end up doing is you reduce the cost, you reduce our footprint on the environment, our carbon footprint, and overall it really becomes um, a, you know, a great environment for the employees and our customers love it too. LEED certification is a well-respected international brand that actually provides the, the performance metrics that you need to, to make sure you know what you're uh, certifying to and being able to accomplish. And so we targeted gold because we felt that was the appropriate level for us, balancing both needs on the environment as well as cost. We're not completely done and we, don't, we haven't finalized the certification process. We believe we will certainly become a gold lead. Um, we're certainly shooting for beyond that if we can. I think that there are a couple of things that we've seen in terms of the benefits of being in a green building. First of all, uh, the employees love it. 
they find it to be a very friendly environment. Well, working in a green building is really great because we have this uh, work, open work environment where I get to collaborate with my coworkers much more than if we were in cubes or offices. Um, and I can look up from my computer screen and uh, look out through the windows and see the natural light, which gives me a lot more energy throughout the day. And it's also a good reminder that we're doing good for the environment. And you can start to see the economic benefits of that as well. So we're, we're saving on water, saving the environment, we're saving on energy with the solar panels, uh, our, our thermal storage system, which is really kind of a neat thing. We have 18 ice tanks that we make ice overnight. I mean, the energy um, costs are lower and it's more efficient. And we melt it during the day to run the air conditioning. And so we don't have to run the big compressors for a good part of the day. And it actually saves us tremendous amount of energy and cost. I think what ends up happening is since we're not loading the system during the day, it doesn't overload the system for the rest of the community around us. So from an energy perspective, it actually is flattening out that energy curve and it's making it better for everyone. The windows that we have here are designed to allow a maximum amount of light in, but try to keep the heat out. They also allow the light to come in into the offices, which also reduces the need for lighting. Um, people love it because it's an open, airy environment. A key component of building green is water conservation. So there are a couple of different systems around water collection. We have some retention ponds, so in the, in the rainy season, it, uh, it retains that water and then it ultimately goes down into the, into the stormwater system. In addition, as water comes off the, the solar panels, it gets collected in, in cisterns and that is reused in the building to run the, that infrastructure where you don't need drinking water but you need other water to, to keep the building running. The solar panels are pretty unique attribute of the building. They're actually on the roof of the parking lot, so they take up virtually no space. In fact, they actually add shade for people underneath the solar panels. And they produce more than 10% of our energy, which for an office building, which uses a lot of energy to run the technology we have in this place, that's a fairly good offload of, of energy use. Being in the rental car business, Hertz is no stranger to electric cars, so the company made ample room for them at the headquarters. We have 32 car charging stations right now. Honestly, we don't use that many right now, uh, but we're actually building for the future. So we have 32 car charging stations. For us, that's a great showcase also for what we're trying to do environmentally and what we're trying to do with our customers. When our customers come to visit, they've noted the fact that we are actually trying to be very green about this, particularly the customers that we know care a lot about that. Florida has a unique environment with specific issues that need to be addressed. So it has its own building certification program designed specifically for Sunshine State buildings. The Florida Green Building Coalition is a nonprofit organization that was founded back in 2000 to develop voluntary green building standards for Florida. The whole purpose of the standards is to ensure that Florida develops sustainably so we protect our beautiful natural environment here. The Florida Green Building Coalition standards are unique uh, in that they are the only standards developed with climate-specific criteria for Florida's hot, humid environment and our natural disasters such as hurricanes, wildfires, flooding, termites even. The national programs such as LEED, because they are national programs, they have to address various climate zones. And their standards are um, based on heating dominated climates where Florida is predominantly a cooling dominated climate. So that's why the FGBC standards uh, work best in the Florida environment. Like the LEED program, the FGBC standard has different certification levels, bronze, silver, gold, platinum. The more points or credits earned, the higher level awarded. The Florida Green Building Coalition also has five different programs. We have residential, commercial, land development, high-rise residential, and then we have the only uh, local government standard in Florida. The state of Florida has its own energy code. 
and its own building codes. And they are typically 15% more stringent than national codes. You may be silver for us, and because our standards are more strict in Florida, you may get gold in another program. Since Florida is home to Chico's, choosing the Florida Green Building Coalition standard for a third party certification program was a natural decision. Well, building green, I think, is really just doing the right thing. We have a large footprint here. We have 1,500 associates, uh, 504,000 square feet of office space. And so we use a lot of water. We use a lot of energy. But uh, if we can make it as efficient as possible, which we've done, we use a lot. We know that. But we use less than you would normally if you didn't build green. I've been here almost 15 years, and I've seen over the years our associates are a lot younger. So they've grown up with building green, and uh, we try to meet their request, and it's paid benefits for us over the years. The difficulty of building green is that it, in some instances it's a little more expensive. This building is 150,000 square feet, so you, you, you document a lot as you're going along. We built this building uh, through certification from the Florida Green Building Coalition because they take into consideration building in Florida. It's a lot different than it is building in the Midwest or somewhere else. Um, you know, you take into consideration uh, the plantings, the landscaping. Most of, them, most of our planting, about 90%, are drought resistant plants. The other thing they take into consideration is disaster mitigation with hurricanes, wind events. Uh, this building, for example, uh, the code is rated 130 miles an hour. This building is built to 150 miles an hour to withstand a, a storm. So there are certain things that the uh, Florida Green Building Coalition gives you credit for that LEED may not. We have um, golf carts for associates to get around, bicycles. So you're limiting the miles that are put on cars and, and the carbon footprint. Uh, we have high efficiency uh, HVAC chillers. We have other chillers on campus that were put here in 1994. So we can definitely tell the difference, not only in the performance, but in the uh, cost of running them. This building is much cheaper to run than other buildings on campus just because of the high efficiency chillers. During the construction process, uh, we knew we were gonna build green. Um, so there was some things we had to make decisions on, uh, whether we wanted to get the credit at that point. There's some things we didn't take the credit on just because it, 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 the cost would have been uh, prohibitive for us to do that. But uh, you know, as we went along, we knew where we were as far as credits and achieving the standard we wanted to achieve. And really it was during the planning process that um, we determined a lot of materials. 50% of the construction material was recycled. So that, that's, a, that's a big deal on a, on a building this size. I think our associates are proud to say that this is a green building. We have a plaque downstairs that they see every day and that they know that we're trying to do our part and they're doing their part in the community uh, to lower the carbon footprint. Setting goals for the building is important, including balancing a return on investment with environmental benefits. You know, you could go double platinum level, whatever you wanted to do, if you wanted to spend the money. I mean, we ha we're a publicly owned company. We have shareholders and a responsibility to them to control our expenses. So we, obviously we made some decisions as we went along what would work. So I, I think, again, for us, we're very happy with what we did and the decisions we made. Like the examples of Chico's and Hertz, education of the process is the key to effective green building. Florida Gulf Coast University is not only working towards a more sustainable campus, but also shaping future leaders. Building green is simply picking the best products, the best processes uh, for that given building at that, this given time, looking long term. We're an urban campus. Uh, we've got tall buildings, four-story buildings. Uh, we've got very urban environments, but we have also have the natural environment that's nestled right up to us. And I think preserving that is just so important. We think it's the right thing to do. And again, if you look long term, it really is the most economical way of building as well. It is also looking uh, further into the future so that uh, we can uh, maintain that environment for future generations, future generations of students and staff and faculty. Well, building green is something that the university uh, entered into back in 2007 when Doc, the late Dr. Pegnetter was here. Yeah, the president's climate commitment was signed. 
So at that point in time, one of our first tangible actions was to set a policy that said all future buildings will be LEED, silver, or higher. And we've met that. Every single building that we've built since signing that commitment has been LEED, silver, or higher. LEED seems to have more a name recognition nationwide than any of the other uh, certification systems. So we wanted to select something that was known, uh, something that is tried and true. Certification is important in that it demonstrates to the community and the students uh, our commitment to the environment and our commitment to uh, building uh, sustainably. LEED is a third party uh, confirmation system that shows what we're already doing. So it is a outside source which um, confirms that we're, we're building green. This particular solar field here that we're on is a two megawatt system. Uh, it was constructed in 2009 and it supplies power to three academic buildings. Electric College of Business, Holmes Hall, formerly AB7, which is now Seidler Hall. In this case, for example, Seidler Hall, our initial goal was gold, so that the process at that point in time was the solar field was built, being built almost simultaneous to the building. So we knew we had an opportunity to use the points from it in the building. So when they got together and they put the point structure together, we realized the solar field would benefit Seidler Hall to the point of taking it from a gold building to a platinum building, which at that time, we were the only academic lab facility in the state that was going to be a platinum building. So uh, that was kind of a neat deal that we were the first to achieve that uh, platinum standard in a building, in a lab facility. And it all had to do with the solar field and the points that were created from it in that structure. As FGCU serves as a leader in sustainable future, it is also recognized as one of the only public universities to require students to learn eco-consciousness with a required course called Colloquium. The University Colloquium is one of many ways that sustainability is integrated throughout our curriculum. The University Colloquium, um, the learning outcomes for that course are for students to gain an ecological perspective and a sense of place and an understanding of the principles of sustainability. The thing with sustainability is that it's not just sustainability coordinator's job to make our future bright and the world a peaceful place. It's every profession's job. Every profession has some piece of the puzzle to contribute. And so we try to prepare our students, no matter what they're studying, whether it's business or finance or engineering, to be able to go out into the world and understand what piece of the puzzle they have and apply it. I have friends that are uh, marketing majors, that are nursing majors, um, basically anything. And um, I see them, the way that they integrate sustainability into their lives is just kind of amazing that you get to see all sorts of different people understanding how we each contribute and how we can make the world a better place. While building green is a good step in creating more efficient buildings and workplaces, there are still issues that need to be addressed for future success. Are there back of house financial benefits to LEED certification? The short answer is no. People are doing this because they feel it's the right thing to do, or it's part of their corporate culture, or it's a regulation or a requirement, uh, and or again, they're trying to promote a certain movement with respect to their company. But from a standpoint of pure financial benefits, tax incentives, there really are minimal tax incentives out there. In our part of the country right now, there's not a premium that you can get for green buildings. So that's coming, we're seeing movement in that direction, but it's not something that's happening in the Southeast yet. While Florida ranks as the third most populated state in the U.S., it hasn't yet made the U.S. Green Building Council's top 10 list for green building per capita. In 2015 lead rankings, Illinois leads for the third year, with the West Coast gaining momentum. Since more than 20 million square feet of commercial and high-rise space were certified through the Florida Green Building Coalition instead of LEED, Florida actually is well on its way towards green leadership. Southwest Florida currently lags behind compared to green building trends in other metro markets in the Sunshine State. I would say that one of the challenges is there's a difference between real sustainability and perception of sustainability. Most sustainability features in a building are passive. You don't see them. It's how efficient your mechanical system is. It's the type of lighting that you have. Uh, it's natural light brought into the building through windows. So it's not always uh, a billboard 
item. It's not always something that you see. It's the influence that I have to put in more visible sustainability. So it's that perception versus the real sustainable features. FGCU is working to make sure the green buildings on campus are performing at the peak of efficiency. Uh, us as a university uh, currently are working with some consultants on some benchmarking. So what that means is, is we're studying the building and how it actually performs. Uh, we look at all the light bills, the water, uh, time of use, uh, all the components that go into operating a building. And what we're doing with that is, is we're, we're, we're charting that and see where that actually sets up with other lab facilities and see where, where do we rank. I mean, does this building actually perform or not? In the case of our building, we'll find out. And if it doesn't, then we'll tweak it. Uh, we'll see what we can do to make the changes to make it a better performing building. We have to look for new ways to become even more efficient. Uh, so that's always a challenge, is, is evolving with the times, evolving with the technology, and continuing to incorporate those into the buildings. You always strive to be better, and, and we're always pushed to do so, and that's a good thing. Support for WGCU's local productions comes from the estate of Patrick and Rosalie LaSala and from generous contributions by viewers like you. Thank you. To include WGCU in your legacy planning, visit WGCU.org.